Hey, this is Steve Shankin, stuck home these days like everybody else. I really love visiting schools. You know, most days I just stay in my office and write. And so it's really fun to visit schools, which I obviously can't do right now. But I do have these cool questions from Camillus Middle School, eighth graders. So I'll just jump right into some of those and it'll be almost like a visit, except we can't see each other. So there's that. All right. Who or what inspired or motivated you to switch from textbook writing to historical writing? Um, that's a great question. Great place to start. I mean, that's my the story of my life is um, in, in short, when I was younger than you guys, you know, my brother and I, we used to share a bunk bed and fight all the time, but we decided to be filmmakers together and tried making movies through our 20s. And in a weird way, that led to what I do now because we failed at that. However, um, I really wanted to be a writer. So I, after that, I got this job writing textbooks, which I hated. And so the inspiration to switch from textbooks to, to what I do now is that I really wanted to do more creative type of writing and I doing textbooks all those years, which are really boring. Um, I, at least I found lots of really good stories that I thought would make really cool narrative nonfiction books. And so I kind of took some of the skills I learned when I was working on movies and took the material that I gathered when I was writing textbooks that they would never let me put in the textbooks, that is anything good, and combine those to make the kinds of books that I do now, like Bomb and Born to Fly and Undefeated and Notorious Benedict Arnold, stuff like that. All right. So what inspires me to write in general? That's kind of the same sort of thing. I just always wanted to. Um, even before the movies, I love to draw comics, which I still love to do. I just always thought that was something that I both found fun and I love to see people's reactions to, to things that I wrote. And so I was always looking from that young age, I was looking for some way to keep doing it. And then as an adult, I was looking specifically for some way to make a living at it and finding my way into this world of writing history uh, was, was really lucky for me. And so what inspired you to write Port Chicago 50? That's just one of the, one of my books, but like all of them, they're narrative nonfiction stories. So all true stories that require a lot of research, but they're also stories. That's really key to me that they're, that they're exciting and fun to read. Even if the stories aren't happy stories, they're usually not like in, in Port Chicago, which is a civil rights story from World War II. And that, and that came straight out of, of writing the book that I wrote previously called Bomb. So I was researching this book about World War II, science and spying and the making of the first atomic bomb and came across this wacky conspiracy theory that said that there was an atomic bomb explosion at this place called Port Chicago, California in 1944, which is a year before the Los Alamos scientists tested their bomb in the desert in New Mexico. And that sounded ridiculous and it is ridiculous, but it's out there. You could find it easily on the internet like any wacky conspiracy theory. And so having come across that, I say lucked into that. I said, well, that's, that seems ridiculous, but, but what really happened? And it turns out there really was this huge explosion at a naval base called Port Chicago in California, Bay Area in 1944. And it wasn't a nuclear explosion, but <clears throat> it was a very deadly disaster. And when I started researching it, I realized beyond the story of the disaster, which is interesting, it was a civil rights story. It was about African-American sailors who were sent to this segregated base and put to work doing this dangerous job of loading ammunition. And it was about not just the disaster, but how they stood up against segregation and really took a stand that became one of the building blocks of what we know as the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s. So that really, it was one of those cases where I, I had never heard of it, but as soon as I did, I said, that's my next book. So how long have you been writing this says novels. I want to make it clear that they're not, not novels specifically means, you know, fiction, that you're making stuff up. And I do like writing novels too. But these are these books that we're talking about today are nonfiction books. So I just, um, I'm kind of a stickler for that point because sometimes people accuse me of making things up, which I take as a compliment. But it's very important for me and sort of my reputation that, that uh, you, you realize that I don't, for these nonfiction books, I don't get to make anything up, details, dialogue, Nothing like that. And it's all in the back in the source notes, which I know are not thrilling to read, but it's there if you want them. So how long have you been doing this, this writing? This kind of write, this these kinds of books, about 10, 12 years. And the first one 
in this narrative nonfiction style was the notorious Benedict Arnold, which is just a story that I'm, I've always been obsessed with. Uh, let's see, how long does it take to write each one? On average, on average, I would say one and a half to two years. And it used to be longer now, I've gotten a system together. That also depends on how big and complicated the story is. But I would say it kind of breaks down into halves where the first half is research and the second half is writing. And then the writing really breaks down into halves too because the first half is a first draft and then the second half is very much like being in school where you hand something in and then your teacher corrects it in this case my editor and does anyone like that part of the process where you get something back and it's filled with notes um no writers um it, it, there's something about it where you get something back and it just it almost feels insulting where you have all these corrections on it but that's actually the revision process is it's kind of like the fourth quarter of the game it's definitely the most important part and it's where everything gets smoothed out and turns into a fast paced story. And so that's the, the section that I'm in right now for something new. And it's actually, once you get past all the corrections on the page, it's actually the easiest part of the process, I think, because everything's down, at least you have something down and it's easier to revise it than it is to, to write that first draft. All right, let's see. Which has been my favorite book to write so far. That is really tough. I'm doing kind of a Cold War thriller right now, which is a, a uh, follow up to bomb. I love that kind of science spying action thriller type of format. So this one's really fun, but probably the most fun was my Benedict Arnold book, just because it was so fun to go to the places that, that the story took place in. And I was living in New York City at the time, and I would just kind of go on these weekend Benedict Arnold road trips, which I know sounds incredibly nerdy and weird, but hey, I was into it and it was really fun. And I didn't have kids sitting in the back seat saying, are we there yet? So it was, uh, that was great. All right. Why did you decide to write The Notorious Benedict Arnold? How did you feel about Arnold's betrayal? Yeah, Arnold, you could tell I'm obsessed with this story. I always tried to get it into textbooks. They always kept taking it out saying, oh, you don't need to know that. Just say he's a traitor, which is such a boring way to tell history, just a series of names to memorize. I said, but it's really about the stories and the people and their conflicts and so Arnold is perfect for that because he's this over-the-top loose cannon action hero, like something out of a movie, but of course, 200 years before movies were invented. So that's why I wanted to write it. It's just nonstop action, adventure, spying, romance, everything you could want in this true story. Again, you don't have to make anything up. And, you know, the betrayal, I'm not a, I, as much as I love the story, I'm not saying I love him. I think he was a very hard person to, to get along with. Uh, just super abrasive, very, very arrogant, loud, big personality. And, uh, you know, he was a traitor. There's no doubt about it. But what I hate is that when people just know that and think that's all you need to know, because he was also a great hero, too. And in that contradiction, I think, is what makes people and history interesting. Let's face it. Everyone has this has contradictions in them. And all the heroes, think about all the, the founders of this country, most of them were slave owners. So we have these contradictions built into these figures in history. And I, and I feel like exploring that is what is what's actually interesting. So how did I get into writing? I sort of talked about that. I mean, I just always wanted to, to be some kind of writer. And so it, I tried a lot of different things in addition to comics, screenplays, short stories, novels, all these different things. And finding this textbook job was actually a blessing in disguise because someone was paying me to research and write for, I did that for probably about 10 years. So I really, it was a lot of good practice. And it also made me think maybe I can do this for a living, but I would do my own books, books that someone might actually want to read. And that was the goal that I set. So let's see, how do you make these books action packed? That is, I'm glad you asked that because I hope you think that if you read them. I mean, this is, this is my, obsession is making the books action packed. I think it's just the kind of reader that I am. I don't want to read something boring and I would never give you guys something boring to read. So I, half of it is research. Again, I just, I have to find great stories like Benedict Arnold, like Jim Thorpe and the Carlisle Indian School team. My newest book, Born to Fly, which is about this incredible airplane race across the country in 1929. So I find two stories that are action packed I do a lot of research to find all the great details, quotes, the personalities, and then you know, putting it together, I kind of draw on the, 
skills I learned making movies of how to craft scenes and how to put them together in a fast paced way. And then of course, there's the revision, like I talked about, I, you need an editor, I do every great or good or average or any writer at all. And I'm just I'm just a good writer who works really hard. Um, you need that you need that outside voice help, telling you when things are slowing down. And, and so you can make those revisions and it always involves cuts, painful things that I have to cut out. But the goal with that is to do just what you you're asking about, which is to keep it moving really fast. All right, let's see. Is it fun researching your books? Does it take a long time? Yeah, you could tell I'm a history nerd and proud of it. Yes, it's totally fun. I find the research more fun and the writing more like work. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I love the research. I love going places if I can to see where stories took place and interviewing people, if that's possible, who were there, who know about it. And just almost like a, well, it is like a nerdy detective work. And yes, I love that part of the process. I usually spend up to a year doing that for every book. And I would spend even more if someone would pay me to do that. What was the process like writing Bomb? Same process, you know, about nine months of research, gathering all this material. Now that was a story with scenes all over the world. And I just don't have the time or budget to, to go all these places. So most of that research was nothing that you guys couldn't do. Just going to libraries, getting books, ordering books online, reading things digitally, watching, you know, videos, um, and archives of interviews with the participants because they weren't alive when I was doing the research, but there are videos and audio tapes of them. And so just gathering all that stuff together. And I, like I said, I love that part of the process. What's been your favorite book that you've written? That is tough. It's every writer says the same thing. It's like asking, you know, which of your kids you like the best. I have two, uh, two kids, a daughter in eighth grade and a son in fifth grade. They're upstairs right now doing school work, but you know, they're not really working. Um, yeah, I can't, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I guess maybe bomb because, um, because of the style of book it is, this kind of page turning thriller, which is something I'm always looking for as a reader. And so I thought it would be fun to write. And I, I love anything with spies in it too. Let's see, inspired you to write, what inspired you to write Most Dangerous? That's that was probably the hardest book. No, it was definitely the hardest book to write. The most complicated story. Again, a thriller set in the Cold War, really focused on the Vietnam War. And this one figure who's maybe not super famous, but he was in the 70s. His name is Daniel Ellsberg. Very, very controversial, which you could tell that I like these controversial figures who aren't black and white. And um, what he did was, in a nutshell, he had access to top secret documents that exposed lies the governments had told about the Vietnam War. And he, at tremendous cost to himself personally, he exposed them, he gave them to the, the press and they were printed in newspapers. And it, of course, changed his life. He became in some people's eyes, a hero and some a traitor. And it's just the exact kind of story that I'm looking for because not only does it cover this really important chunk of history, but it does throw so through, through the eyes of a character, a really interesting, multi-dimensional character who has a real journey through the story that sounds like something you would make up for a movie but in this case you don't have to because it's all real and not only that he's still alive it was the first time that i wrote a book where the main character in it was still alive so the action takes place in the 60s and 70s so he's up into his 80s now but um, he's still super political he loves to uh, get involved in issues and it was super fun to to get his take on things, little bits and pieces of, of scenes that just had never been recorded before in history. So I could ask him details and then use them in my book and, and feel like I was using stuff that nobody ever had heard about before. So that was also part of the inspiration to tell this, this really important and hopefully kind of exciting story to read. Let's see, how many more books do you have planned? I, you know, it's hard to say, but I always have a couple things going at once. So I have, you know, this Cold War book that I'm finishing now. And that will be, that's probably a year away from being told to existing as a book. And then I have things that are more in the pipeline kind of stages. I have, I'm doing a graphic novel adaptation of Bomb. So I've already written that and it's being illustrated. Uh, I'm doing another graphic novel that's an original book, just because I, you could tell that I really love comics and it's fun to write. I love to draw too, but I'm not quite a good enough artist to um, that anyone would pay me to draw a graphic novel. So 
for these, I'm writing the script and having some, you know, actually good artists draw them. And then beyond that, I mean, I'm, I plan to do some other nonfiction books. I'd love to, to, to branch out into some, some fiction stuff too, and, and definitely more graphic novels. So I feel like I have at least five or six ideas right now for things I want to do. And then hopefully beyond that, I'll keep going, but we'll have to see. All right. Here's the last one on this list. Why did you decide to write about football? So asking, I guess, about undefeated. When you mentioned in the book that you weren't all that into sports. I don't know if I did. I mention that. I believe you, whoever's asking that. But I don't remember mentioning that. I've always been a sports fan. Not the greatest athlete, but I, but I, but good enough. You know, like one of those um, kids who, who loved to play pickup games with his friends, but was never actually, you know, I would, like they would never have me on the football team in school. I was, um, I was good at things like cross country where you could be super skinny and that, that was okay. Um, but yeah, I always wanted to write a sports book. And so I, it was one of those things that all, over the years I was collecting stories and looking for things and always had that in the back of my mind. If I could find a really good enough sports story, I'm going to write that. And I, so I came across the Jim Thorpe story, which just, again, it has everything. It's just a super compelling story about this, very interesting guy who's literally became the best athlete in the world. But it's really about also the school that he went to and the improbable against all odds rise that they had to become against just obstacles on and off the field that you just couldn't make up and couldn't imagine um, the best team in the country. And so it had everything. It had all the action that you want in a sports book. Again, without making anything up, it had an incredibly compelling main character, a really important part of American history, and all together in one. And that's what inspired me to finally say, all right, this is the sports story that I want to tell. And so, all right, that's the list of questions that I had for today. Thanks for sending them in. It was fun kind of doing a sort of school visit, and I hope you guys are doing all right, and see you next year. Thanks.